This is a recorded message. Daddy's brain is still at the menders. I brought you some coffee. You drink it. It's a beautiful day outside. Then go outside and drink it. <laughs> I said we'd maybe better let him lie. Well, it was time he was up anyway. I mean, parents are supposed to set an example. So just lying there like a lump. Lump? Listen, if I wanted to, I could leap out of this bed, fling open the windows, do 40 press-ups, and still have enough breath to greet the morn with a shout of joy. Well, then why don't you? Because I've been knackered for the rest of the day. <laughs> but what are you doing in here anyway? Oh, Maddie's got some exciting news. It's just been delivered. Congratulations, boy or girl. It's her local paper. My father sends it to me every week. The end of a bagel bugle. Is that a Jewish publication? <laughs> local newspaper. Well, I must have been thinking of the aim of a bugle bagel. Yeah. Well, maybe so, but anyhow, they have this letter page, dear Joan, and um, well, I've had this letter printed. Well done, Maddie. Oh, it really isn't very much, you know, but I've got to start somewhere, and this is my first time in print. Oh, come on then, let's hear it. Oh, oh, I couldn't, I couldn't, I really couldn't, I'd never get the word zoot. Well, look, I'll just, um, I'll just leave it here, and, uh, <laughs> If you want to, just if you want to, mind, you know, you could, um, you could, um, but not that it'll interest you very much, but if it does, then please feel free to, you know, but uh, don't expect too much, I mean, it's nothing, it's nothing at all, but you're welcome to if you want to, but if you don't want to, you know, well, when you're kicking the heat, who cares if it's a cuddy? Do you know, sometimes I wish he had subtitles. <laughs> Come on, you read it to me. Dear Joan, my grandfather lived in Inverbagel all his life, and I never saw him do anything but smile. Obviously, he was the local loony. Dad. <laughs> Whenever he saw a glum face, he'd always say his little rhyme. Lift off your clute and look a boot when days are cold and grey. If you've a tooth, then ope up your mouth and smile the clouds away. And they thought McGonagall was a bad poet. <laughs> you been doing some writing yourself? What? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, uh, well, I found this old address book and I just sort of... Jotting down a few names and numbers before I throw it away. <laughs> Sally, Nikki, Jane, Estelle. Did you really go out with all these girls? Uh-huh. <laughs> Mind you, it was sort of spread over a period of five or six years. Hmm. And, of course, you were younger, too. That must have helped. In what way? Not so knackered. <laughs> <laughs> what are the ticks for? Or shouldn't I ask? Oh, no, no, no. There's nothing suggestive about it at all. I mean, if I, if I put a tick next to the girl's name, it just sort of means that they were more... Um, they were more, they were, they were sort of, they were sort of more fun to be with. I'd hate to be a name on a list like this. I sincerely hope you won't be. What does that mean? You hope I won't go out with men like you? Yeah. No, no. <laughs> Excuse me, can I have my list back, please? Which one was Kim? Hmm? The one you've underlined twice. Kim Tracy? Oh, she was, um... Uh, oh, she, she was, um, a designer like your mother. In, in fact, your granny liked her. Didn't she come on holiday with us? That's right, to Ibiza. She was nice. Would you like to see her again? Has this got anything to do with Grand's campaign? <laughs> it does seem a bit like that, doesn't it? But, you know, sometimes I think maybe it's not such a bad idea. I mean, I loved your mother very much. And, uh, well, I never thought I'd sort of remarry, but now... But I'm not so sure. Does that sort of upset you? Well, it wouldn't be right if it did, but then was then, now's now. You know, you should send that to the Inverbagel Bugle. <laughs> you will send something nice, 
writes to Maddie about her letter, won't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be right down as soon as I've soldered the final connections to my brain. Well, it got easier to get up as you got older. Nothing gets easy as you get older. Getting older doesn't even get easy as you get older. <laughs> Kim. Kim Harrop. Simon and Kim Harrop. <laughs> oh, God. Just uh, hang on a minute. Yeah, yeah, what is it? Have you, uh, have you finished with my bugle? <laughs> no, sorry, no, 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 I haven't. Did you, uh, did you read my letter? Yes, I did. Oh, you didn't like it, did you? Oh, I mean, did you? Did you like it? Oh, you didn't, did you? I did. You didn't, did you? I did. You did? And I'm going to read it again. Well, you wouldn't, would you? I would. You would? <laughs> well, I wouldn't say I would if I wouldn't, I would I? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'll leave it to you then. You know, I, I kind of thought with your sophistication in that, you might think it was a wee bit wet. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Definitely not wet. <laughs> Absolutely soaking. <laughs> Hey, a bit early in the morning for you to be playing Space Invaders, isn't it? I'm doing a cost breakdown for the show we're mounting for the Darcy chocolate salesman. Well, look, Darcy's have sent over their new box. Yes, but there's the same rotten old chocolates inside, are they? Afraid so. Even my dog won't touch them. <laughs> Tried them out on the kids and Muriel accused me of trying to poison them. <laughs> I don't think I was. <laughs> so listen, Derek, how are we going to coax 150 bored salesmen to get excited about a project they couldn't even give away last year? Well... Look, I know this is your department, you're the creative one, but I, I had this idea. I'm, it's a bit rough at the moment, so cast aside if you don't like it, but as it's a summertime selection, I thought the girls could come on, you know, in cut-down jeans and, and straw hats, and they're singing, Ah, oh, well, here we are, and it's summertime on the farm, and we're having lots of fun and making hay. And things, but what we like most is oh, Darcy's summertime selection. <laughs> what, what, uh, what, 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 what do you think? Oh, <laughs> that good, eh? Ooh. Well, at least the costumes for the girls would be cheap. Listen, if we've got the girls to come out with any costumes at all, it'd be even cheaper. And, of course, who'd look at the chocolates, eh? Oh, I recognise those knuckles. Nell? Yes, it's me. Pretend to be working. I'm coming in. We are working, you suspicious old Harridan. Oh, nice to her, Simon. She's coming to sign cheques. Nell, you are looking absolutely fabulous. Yes, I know. I'm delighted to see the girls here this morning. Liz. Yes, Liz. Yes, but we are letting her off this afternoon. Oh, no. It's a very economic arrangement. She only works for us part-time. Yes, and the other time she goes for auditions. Oh, yes, of course. She wants to be an actress. Has she done much? Oh, yeah, yeah. 18 auditions since last Tuesday. <laughs> Liz, could you come in a minute, please? Yes, Mr. Arrow. And could you give us your National Theatre audition? Oh, all right, then. She does this one a lot. Lady Macbeth. No, it's Barbara Woodhouse. <laughs> what do you mean, Barbara Woodhouse? Sorry, 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 sorry. Hell is murky. This is Shakespeare's Lady Macbeth. Well, it isn't Enid Blyton, is it? <laughs> but who would have thought the old man to have so much blood in him? Good, isn't it? Uh, we'll let you know. <laughs> OK. I still think we should consider employing a full-time secretary. It costs us three times what we pay Liz. She's a little gem, isn't she? <laughs> Come over here, Nell. I've set out all the bills in order. Before I part with any more of my lifeblood, have we had a designer yet for the Darcy promotion? No, no, not yet. Good, because I called Kim Tracy this morning and asked her to consider it. Nell, have you been talking to Sam again? This has nothing to do with your personal life. Kim happens to be a very good designer. You could, of course, say no, but it would be very embarrassing. Why? She's waiting downstairs in her car. I got her to drive me in. No. No, please don't get up. I'll fetch her. Derek, how do you get on with your mother-in-law? 
rather well, actually. She and her husband don't like the way the kids are being brought up, so every time they come round, we all gang up on Muriel. <laughs> why, are you, why are you getting so jittery about meeting Kim again? I don't know. Well, I do, really. Why? Well, guilt, mainly. I mean, you know, towards the sort of end of our affair, I, well, I treated her pretty rotten, you know. I, I didn't return phone calls stood her up at dates, and I suddenly saw this sort of matrimonial gleam in her eye, you know, and I wanted no part of that. Oh, God. Just once in my life, I'd like to be really rotten to a woman. <laughs> not, not cruel, you understand, just sort of... Mean, moody and magnificent. Exactly. I have this picture of myself standing like Tom Jones, and there's this gorgeous girl with black, glossy hair and a torn petticoat, and she's clutching at my ankle, and I'm saying... No more, it's not good for you. <laughs> Maybe we could have a sort of a govern warning tattooed across your chest. <laughs> Too much Derek may damage your health. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, why don't you try being sort of mean and moody with Muriel? Don't be stupid. <laughs> Wait, for a start, she's always been half an inch taller than me anyway. Now she's doing these bodybuilding classes. <laughs> Muriel with muscles. My God. Awesome thought, isn't it? Is she getting any? Well, I do my best. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Strawberry behaviour. What is? Kim wasn't there. Well, maybe she's decided she didn't want the job after all. I think she does. She's probably decided she can't face you again, you animal. <laughs> uh, no, no, no problem, no, no problem. I'll, I'll try and give Kim a ring later on, OK? Why don't you, um, arrange to meet her informally uh, back at your place say i know sam's dying to see her again now don't you ever get tired of running my life well it's cheaper than running a car <laughs> though it does share the same problem and what's that every so often you have to get out and push <laughs> Hi, Sam. Dad. What? Why? What? Why did you do it? Why are you whispering? I don't want Maddie to hear. Look, come in here. She found her paper all scrunched up in your waste bin. Well, I spilt coffee all over it this morning. Oh, hello, Mr. Harrop. Oh, hi, Maddie. Listen, I'm terribly sorry if I upset you. Oh, it's quite all right, Mr. Harrop. Oh, it was a stupid letter anyway. I'm, I'm not upset. I'm really not. So, as my father would say, please don't fash yourself. Oh, but I have fashed myself. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I've fashed myself good and proper. By God, I do feel better for it. <laughs> I'm sorry, Samantha. It's no joke. Please, please. No. Madeline Dunlop, you thought your flinty hearted employer had ripped open your first printed opus in a fit of pique or jealousy, but oh no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Because Madeline Dunnock, cook, housemaid, nursekeeper, and hack, this is your letter. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Friend, Dad, for me. Mm. Oh, Mr. Hannah, what can I say? Well, you can tell me what that delicious smell is in the kitchen. Oh, that's just a wee casserole I put in for your supper. Oh, great, because somebody might be sort of popping around later on. <laughs> Oh, this, this is beautiful, Mr. Hannah. <laughs> Just beautiful. Now, don't cry. If you're going to cry, go to your room. I'll just go and hang it on my wall. <laughs> oh, I can't hang it on my wall, can I? Well, it'd look a bit silly around your neck, wouldn't it? <laughs> hello, Simon. Well, hello. Long time. Yes, it is. You look sensational. Well, you look very well yourself. Are you inviting me in? I'm <laughs> oh, sorry, yes, sorry, come in, come in, come in. I uh, brought some examples of my recent work. OK, well, we'll have a look at them later, shall we? Do you want to go in? Mm -hmm. OK. Well, you're certainly not fat. Sorry? Uh, you're still in the same flat. Yes! <laughs> Do you remember it? Yeah. Drink? Mm -hmm. uh, whiskey with... Soda, wasn't it? Hello, Kim. Samantha. Yes. 
I don't believe it. You're all grown up. Well, I hope I've got a bit to go yet. I'm only 13. Oh, 13? You realise, Simon, you have a teenage daughter. I know. It's depressing, isn't it? I'm just one step away from the paunch and pension. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I looked out some holiday snaps your dad took in Ibiza. But how old were you then? A ghastly, pathetic eight. <laughs> you weren't ghastly. Oh, look. Here's one of the two of us on the beach together. Oh, I was such a horrible little prig. I know you never really approved of me going topless. Yes, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> and look at my puritanical daughter. Do you realise you were the only female on that beach who wouldn't take a bikini top off? Well, that's why it makes it so pathetic. Why? When I was eight, I had absolutely no reason to keep it on. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember when that fat German dived in and soaked everybody? <laughs> yes, and the little Frenchman who hated him so much suddenly went for him with the air bed and, <laughs> and slipped on our suntan oil. And then sat on top of that fat German's wife. <laughs> oh, I'd forgotten just how hilarious that holiday was. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's amazing how time flies when you're having fun. Don't you agree, sir? I think Dad's hinting I should go to bed. No, not at all. <laughs> If I wanted you to go to bed, I'd say so. All right, then I'll stay up. Go to bed. <laughs> OK. You can come down and say goodnight when you're in your night things, all right? Yeah, so you can get down to business. Get up! <laughs> Do you want some more coffee? I don't think so. OK. I can't get over how she's changed. I'll tell you something, Kim, you haven't. Do you know, you're still as stunning as the first time I saw you. Simon. Hey, do you remember when that was? Graphics exhibition, Whitechapel. That's right, and you, <laughs> you were with that frightful blimp in a business suit. <laughs> he wasn't a blimp. No, excuse me a second. He was a very sweet, very talented merchant banker. Yes, of course he was. And what was his name again? Uh, Nuffy? Giffy? Jeffrey. Jeffrey, Jeffrey, yes, that's right. <laughs> Thank you. He didn't stand much of a chance, did he? Once I clapped eyes on you. <laughs> Simon. Good night, Jerry. I just <laughs> had this fabulous idea for more. I can't stay long. I've got little brutes in the car. If I leave them alone for more than a minute, they try to garrot each other with the seatbelts. <laughs> no, we've just been to Jessica's dancing display, and I suddenly thought, oh my gosh, what a blunder. Hello, Jerry. <laughs> Kim. Kim. Well, I, I, I knew he was going to ring you, but I didn't... Oh, Kim. Oh. oh, I'm so sorry. If I'd known, I'd never have barged in. I'm so... There's no problem as long as you barge right out again. Yeah, but first, look, I had this really great idea when I saw all these little girls dancing about on the stage. Do you know, sometimes I worry about you, though. <laughs> no, for, for the Darcy promotion, hmm? they're all amateurs, so we can get them dirt cheap. You mean we can exploit them? Absolutely. <laughs> we can dress them up as individual chocolates, you know, the sort of thing. Um... Hello, I'm Cherry Cup. And I'm Almond Whip. And I'm... Nutty's a fruitcake. No! <laughs> really? Now, Derek, I, I still think I prefer your farmyard idea. What farmyard idea? Uh, well, we get these dancers in welly boots hopping about in sheep's dip and horse manure. <laughs> What have sheep's dip and horse manure got to do with chocolates? Have you tasted the chocolates? <laughs> I think this new idea is much better, don't you, Kim? Yes, well, you can discuss it another time. That's if I can persuade Kim to take on the designing job. If there's anything I can say that might help. How about good night, Kim? Good night, Kim. <laughs> good night, Derek. Good night, Kim. Good night, Derek. Good night, animal. <laughs> mean that about the job? Hmm? Well, yes, yes, of course I did. But uh, uh, before we get on to that, there's, some, there's something else I'd, I'd like to say to you, something I sort of couldn't say on the phone. So do I. Please, I've started, so I'll finish. <laughs> now, three years ago, I, I treated you very badly. And I'm very sorry for that. But I just felt that I was getting in a bit, you know, a bit too deep. And, uh, well, that's why I sort of slammed the door in your face. But you didn't. No, please, please, please. And I think it was really because, uh, well, I, I was falling in love with him. And, uh, well, I wasn't ready for that. But now tonight, seeing you with Sam together, you know, I've suddenly sort of realized how wrong I was. Oh, Simon. Very, very wrong. I, I just don't know how to say it. Just say it. Don't be afraid, just say it. Well, Simon. Yeah? I'm afraid you're still wrong. Hmm? You didn't drop me. It's very nice of you to say so, but I did. But you didn't, because I dropped you. <laughs> I got tired. 
tired of competing. With who? Ruth. My wife? Oh, she was still the yardstick for everything I did. I mean, I don't mind competing with another woman. But when you're fighting a memory, the going gets too tough. Well, you may think you slammed the door, but believe me, I was on the other side pulling it shut. Well, that's why I couldn't face you this morning. I felt I treated you so badly. No, 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 but, but uh, you see, I, I've, I've been going around telling everybody how horrible I was to you. <laughs> no, come on, think of all the times I stood you up. But you didn't. I did. You couldn't have done because I didn't show up either. <laughs> what, you mean I've, I've been... I've been feeling guilty for all these years for nothing. Well, if it's any consolation, I took a long time to get over you too. Did you really? A long, long time. And I suppose you're completely sort of, um, how can I put it, you're completely sort of um, recovered, are you? I hope I am. And there's no sort of chance of a sort of slight relapse? I'd be crazy even to think of it. Well, sometimes it doesn't do any harm to be a bit crazy now and then. It does if you're getting married next month. I know, but I'm not getting... <laughs> you're getting married? To the frightful blimp in a business suit. You're marrying Goofy? Jeff. Sorry, uh, Jeffrey, Jeffrey. <laughs> Since you first saw him, he's lost a lot of weight and gained a vast amount of money. And he hasn't been married before, so I have no memories to compete with. I've come to say good night. Good night, Sam. Oh, and I think congratulations are in order. Kim's getting married. God, you work fast. <laughs> no, 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 not me. To a very slim, very rich merchant banker. Oh, congratulations. When's the wedding? Listen, I think you can talk to Kim another time because you will be working with us on the Darcy Chalks promotion. So, uh, bed buys, OK? Um, Dad, hmm? can I have a quick word with you? Outside. Won't be long. Yeah? Are you sorry she's getting married? Well, I'd be stupid and arrogant if I thought we could just sort of pick up from where we left off. It just so happens occasionally I am stupid and arrogant. Well, if there's any help, I rescued your old address book from the waste bin. <laughs> Thanks, kid. But, uh, I don't need that no more. As they say in the bagel bugle, when we stand, now is now. You know what I mean, Sam? That's really good, Dad. <laughs> you sound just like him. Thank you. <laughs> Not many people can do, Ronald Reagan. Yeah. <laughs>